You know, every time I tell someone I'm an anesthesiologist, I get the same response. Oh, no way. So you give people the good stuff, right? And you know what? They're not wrong. When I'm in the operating room, I use some of the most powerful and basically infamous drugs on the planet. But the same molecules that keep grandma comfortable during her hip replacement, well, they also have a side hustle on the streets. I'm Dr. Daniel Modell, an anesthesiologist, and today we're diving into the overlap between legitimate anesthesia and what you might call extracurricular chemistry. Yes, this is the episode that'll probably get me on some weird watch list. But if you must know, let's talk about the strange double life of these substances. First up is ketamine. In the OR, ketamine is kind of like a Swiss army knife. Pain relief, check. Sedation, check. Keeping your blood pressure up when everything's going south, check. In anesthesia, ketamine's like that reliable friend who's always got jumper cables and snacks on road trips. But outside the hospital, it's got a totally different reputation. On the street, ketamine is often called Special K, not to be confused with the breakfast cereal, unless your breakfast cereal also makes you see rainbow unicorns melting from the ceiling. Recreational users chase ketamine for its dissociative effects, that floaty out-of-body trip. But here's the problem. In the operating room, I give it in carefully measured doses with monitors, extra oxygen, and a crash cart standing by. On the street, you just got some mystery substance in some mystery dose and zero medical backup. That's how you go from, whoa, this is weird, to, whoa, I'm in the emergency room. Oh, and the whole horse tranquilizer thing? Well, that's kind of true, but misleading. Ketamine is approved for use in lots of animals, including humans. I mean, you wouldn't call penicillin a cattle antibiotic just because we give it to cows, right? Okay, next up is fentanyl. In surgery, fentanyl is a beautiful thing. It's short acting, it's insanely potent, and it allows me to fine tune pain control during and right after a procedure. When used correctly, it's like a perfectly tuned sports car, powerful, fast, and smooth. But out on the streets, fentanyl has become a nightmare. It's 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. That is insane. Think about that, 100 times more potent than morphine. That means a dose the size of a couple grains of salt can be enough to kill you. That's not an exaggeration. In the OR, I know exactly how much I'm giving, how fast I'm giving it, and I'm watching you breathe the whole time. On the street, sometimes it's mixed with heroin, cocaine, even counterfeit pills, and that means you have no idea how much you're taking. That's why we're seeing so many overdoses. It's like playing Russian roulette, but the gun has five bullets in it instead of one. If ketamine is the chill stoner of the anesthesia drug world, fentanyl is the mob boss. Dangerous, unpredictable, and absolutely not someone you want to mess with. Next is midazolam, also known as Versed in the US. This is my favorite one to use, especially with kids. Because when you take midazolam, you're still awake. Your brain just won't bother recording the memories. It's like disabling the save button in your head. So when I give it to kids, I like to ask them if they have any pets, like a dog or a cat. If they say yes, I ask them the pet's name. Then after the surgery's over, I go check up on them and I'll say, you'll never guess what happened. Luna and Rover came to see you while you were sleeping and they told me they love you so much. Oh my God, their faces light up and their jaws hit the floor, but they don't remember they're the ones who told me their dog's name in the first place. And don't worry, I let them know the truth after a little while, but it is pretty cute to see them flip out thinking their pet bunny rabbit or whatever came to see them while they were sleeping. Now the problem out on the street is that benzodiazepines like midazolam or Valium or Xanax are used for their sedative effects. But when combined with alcohol or opioids, they can cause respiratory depression, as in you stop breathing. In the OR, I use midazolam with precision, but out in the wild, people pop these like candy, sometimes with other depressants, and that can put you into a coma or worse. Also, midazolam has a weird place in pop culture as part of so-called date rape drug cocktails, because again, it makes you forget what's actually happening to you, which makes it one of the creepiest drugs to misuse. We give it in medicine with consent, supervision, and purpose. On the street, consent is maybe not the first thing on people's minds when they're using these drugs. Ah, propofol. In anesthesia, that's that white milky liquid that takes you from wide awake to count backwards from We call it milk of amnesia because it looks like milk. Outside the hospital, propofol doesn't really have a huge street market. It's actually pretty hard to get, and it's not exactly a party drug. I mean, it just kind of knocks you out. But its claim to fame, of course, is the Michael Jackson case. He was using propofol at home to help him sleep, which is just not how that works. 
Propofol isn't a sleeping pill, it's general anesthesia in a syringe. In the OR, we've got airway monitoring equipment, oxygen availability, and resuscitation gear. At home, you've got, like, a pillow. Good luck with that. Nitrous oxide, known as laughing gas, is the party clown of anesthesia. In the OR, it's mild, cheerful, and generally plays well with others. On the street, people inhale it from balloons or whipped cream canisters at raves to get that short, giggly high. But if you inhale too much nitrous without enough oxygen, then congratulations, you've discovered how to pass out and get brain damage at the same time. Also, chronic use can deplete your body's store of vitamin B12, which can lead to nerve damage. So yeah, that funny walk probably won't be so funny when it's permanent. So there you have it, the weird overlapping Venn diagram of anesthesia and street drugs. Same chemistry, different context. In the hospital, these drugs save lives, ease pain, and make surgery possible. On the street, without dosing control, medical monitoring, or a sterile environment, they can ruin lives in seconds. The difference isn't just the drug, it's the training, the setting, and the intention behind its use. So next time you see your anesthesiologist, enjoy whatever they've got to give you. But if you want to wake up, don't try these drugs out on the street. They're just loaded weapons in the wrong hands. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and drop a comment down below if you have any personal stories about any of these drugs, good or bad. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.